So I'm here with Ross uh, from eTrax, and we're just going to ask him a few questions about uh, his brand new electric truck. Now, I understand this one is one of the first into the country, and you've just imported this and the other one that you've got out there? Yeah, that's correct. These arrived uh, two weeks ago, and wow. we put the number plates on two days ago. So, yeah. Awesome. So what can you tell me about this in terms of uh, range, in terms of charging, uh, I guess for this one and the other one that you've got outside? Yeah, sure. These are, these are rated at 250 kilometre range at 50% loading, which is how they do it where they manufacture it. And uh, the charging is two systems. It's got both DC fast charging for 80 kilowatts and also an AC slower charge system. Yeah. And how long would it take on DC charging versus AC charging? Uh, DC charging at 80 kilowatts, it will be about two hours. Um, with the AC slow charger, probably 10 to 14. Right. So... 250 k's at half load, um, you're obviously looking about what, where that fits into your market. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about what sort of market you're aiming for and what sort of range they'd need for it to work for them? Sure, these trucks are uh, aimed squarely at the metro market, uh, delivery logistics, uh, perhaps even compression waste uh, pickup. Uh, so most of our customers are telling us, or potential customers are telling us that it's between 115 and 150 kilometres a day they need. Uh, so we're, we've got plenty for that. Right. And I guess if you do have anyone that, whose needs are outside of that, they'd still be able to um, sort of, I guess, like, you know, two hours, that's enough time to sort of unload your truck, load your truck up, have a, give the driver a rest, and then get back into it? Yeah, p potentially uh, people are looking at double shifting them, and uh, that's certainly a possibility. Also, one of the advantages for, of a metro electric truck is the noise. So uh, s some of our customers are looking exclusively at using them at night uh, just to fit their noise, noise issue. Right, so are there usually a lot of new noise restrictions for using trucks for deliveries at night? Uh, yeah, well, th not so much restrictions, but just uh, uh, good neighbours, really. Uh, mm. it, it just th it'll, They'll be allowed to work longer. Uh, if, if the noise is less than a diesel truck, for example. Yeah, well, that definitely sounds like a better option than having sort of loud, smelly trucks rolling through our sort of cities where all our people are. Um, can you tell me a bit more about, uh, I guess, you know, the challenges that you'd face in sort of getting uh, the industries to adopt these sorts of trucks uh, versus what they're using now? Uh, well, we've been actually um, almost amazed by the, uh, the interest that's been um, shown in this truck. I think we're, because we were one of the first OEMs to have a uh, electric truck that you can buy off a lot uh, has put us in a quite a good position. But uh, so far, the, the challenges has really been around about infrastructure for charging these trucks. Uh, you can't charge them on the public DC fast charging network because these trucks, the battery is more than the 500 volts that the public network can charge. So all, these, all our owners will have to buy a uh, charger uh, to charge them themselves. But that's, that's probably our main um, uh, infrastructure issue at the moment. Right. And I guess the main uh, thing that people are always looking at, especially with fleet buyers, is the um, sort of costs involved. Uh, so to reach cost parity with like a normal diesel truck, if you sort of take out the environmental and sort of noise benefits out of it, what are your sort of fuel savings time to sort of cover the difference in price from a normal truck? Sure, well the sticker price of this truck's roughly two and a half times uh, the diesel equivalent, so that it does take a bit of earning that back. Uh, we, we calculate at the moment with the, uh, if using off-peak power to charge the truck, uh, the fact you haven't got a diesel engine to service, which sa is a bit of a saving, and also we've got at the moment uh, zero RUC charges on uh, electric trucks. It, it brings the cost uh, comparison to diesel down to paying 26 cents a litre for your diesel fuel. So that's a saving for our average user, perhaps 40,000 case in a truck like this, around about $11,000 a year right. uh, savings compared to an equivalent diesel truck. Right, so if you, if you sort of take the base price and it's sort of about two times, you said, more than a, more than a normal truck, then, you know, run out $11,000 a year and then that sort of covers that cost. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, broadly speaking, that's, that's around about right. Yeah. Yeah. Plus all the benefits from being a good neighbour. Well, there's that too, sure. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much for your time today, Ross, and uh, I look forward to seeing a lot more of these on our streets. Um, before I let you go, you said you've got two trucks here. Um, can you tell me a bit about the, two, the differences between the two trucks? Uh, the other one's just got a cargo body on it. Um, as a demonstrator, we want to, uh, some of the, the customers that have, ex uh, potential customers that have expressed interest uh, are logistics companies, and we wanted to have something that they could use straight away. Awesome. All right, thanks a lot. Appreciate it.